I'm Michael Peters, sports editor of the Tulsa World. I'm sitting alongside World Senior Sports columnist John Klein for the very first time in this spot, you and I together. So it's a big week always. OU Texas is always a big is always a big week. Um, it's this, a bigger week because you and I are on the same I team. I know, for the, for the first time in two years. I know, it's very exciting. Now, does, is this the last uh, OU Texas with Mac Brown and, my, and Bob Stoops? Uh, with the two of them together, yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, it's it's interesting because I think people always say, well, it's always the same, and it's it's not always the same. It's better when they're both ranked in the top five or top ten. So, you know, I, yeah, it's still important, and I think it's still an interesting game, and, and Texas, usually the big underdog in this game, usually plays way above their head. So, yeah, I think it's still got a chance to be an interesting game, and, and obviously it has a big impact on both of these schools. I think both of them really need to win this game. But it's not, I mean, let's be realistic, it's not what it used to be. I mean, Texas already lost twice, and they should have lost three times. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Oklahoma, on the other hand, they're, they're kind of floating along. I think they seem to be, you know, winning games, but they're not exactly making me think they look like Florida State or Alabama or, or even Baylor. But they are winning games, and th that's important at this point because they're still kind of, I think, finding their way offensively a little bit, you know, trying to transition into Blake Bell. Right, they're going to have to get more out of their offense. Now, I'm uh, on the Baylor bandwagon, and I've, uh, I've, I'm I've, too. I've said I, that. I think now, they're really so, good. So do you buy OU as a, a Big 12 title contender now? No, I buy him as a contender, but I, I think Baylor's, the, if you had to rank them right now, I think Baylor's got to be one, and Oklahoma and Texas Tech are in that mix below that. Look, uh, you know, Texas Tech has actually been pretty efficient, and uh, if you look at how they've played so far, I think you got to put Tech in that mix too, but no question, the way Baylor's playing and the fact that teams in this league are struggling with offense, and if you're struggling with offense, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with Baylor because Baylor's going to score a lot of points against you. They only scored you, 70 last week against right, West Virginia. Right. <laughs> they, they, yeah, a team that OU beat 16-7 to seven, yes. and a team that beat Oklahoma State. Yes. So, you know, it was 63-14 to 14 to open the third quarter. So that should tell you everything, all you skeptics out there, I don't care if it is Baylor and you're like, well, it's Baylor. Well, big deal. They can still be great, and I think right now they're they're the best team in the league. One team we're not mentioning in that mix now is Oklahoma State. They've kind of fallen off of that mix. Offense. Are they? Are it's they, offense. What is? Where are they right now, and what do uh, they have I, to do to turn it around? I think some of their stuff is fixable. Now I think the part that's fixable, to me, would be their offensive line. I think they can kind of patchwork that into something better. If they can get their line better then they'll be able to run a little bit better. They do not have, I found, you know, I was talking about the other day with someone, they've had an NFL running back in their backfield for like the last 12 years. They don't have that. And that's a huge difference for them. So they don't have an NFL quality running back. Their offensive line's not as good as it's been. And their quarterback is okay, he's a nice player, but he's really struggling because they can't pass block for him and they can't run. If they can do one or the other of those two things, I think they'll be okay, but they are not in that elite top two or three right now in the league, no question. Now, you're going to make a trip to El Paso this weekend to watch Tulsa, and I watched them last weekend, and they are really struggling as well. Is there anything that they can do to get back into this thing? Their problems are not as fixable, and I, I think their problems are much bigger and a lot more of them. The difference is Oklahoma State plays in the Big 12. Tulsa plays in a league where a lot of people have a lot of problems. So they do have a chance to fix some problems because the teams they're going to play are not as good. At the same time, uh, they just have not played good defense at all. And, and I realize a lot of those are new guys, but they've got to get better. And they haven't shown a whole lot of progress. Their line has all kinds of problems. They're getting almost no production at quarterback on, on the, the passing game. And they can't run at all. And they've got two high-quality running backs. So they're a little bit of a mystery to me. But I think they're really interesting because they're, playing, they're getting ready to play a bunch of teams that look just like them. Tulane, UTEP, teams that have similar problems. And, and you know, who knows if they can get it turned around. But they're the, they're the ones that are in the biggest trouble right now because they don't seem to have an answer for many of their problems. You can catch John Klein on 1430. 5 o'clock every, every, every day, every day. And that's all we've got time for this week. Please join us again next time.